President of the Love World Incorporated, better known as Christ Embassy, Chris Oyakilome, has berated some church leaders for complying with the government order on ban on gatherings without asking the government for time to pray and consult with their congregation. According to the pastor, such leaders are not true Christians, and it was the reason the country was yet to see the hand of God. The cleric who spoke in a telecast to his members while questioning why COVID-19 patients were shut out from churches, a place to describe is meant for healing, said the government would soon begin to classify churches based on their compliance with the directives on the COVID-19 pandemic. Oyaki Lome, who told his congregation he had a lot to tell them, said churches would soon be asked to set up testing centers because people will not be going for testing. He also queried the motives for the planned vaccination against the pandemic. We're now being joined by Reverend Gideon Bara Malem to take a look at this. Good evening, Gideon, and how are you doing this evening? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now, what's your reaction to Pastor Chris Oyakilome berating some church leaders for complying with the government's order on ban on gatherings without asking the government for time to pray and also consult with their congregation? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I thought about that very deeply, and then I just wondered, normally, if the government gave this kind of directive of encouraging churches not to come together uh, for worship in large numbers because of COVID-19, uh, the, the practice I know in the Bible is that the pastor or the preacher or whoever would go to seek the face of God in prayer. So I found, I found it rather strange that Pastor Chris would say that church leaders are to go back and talk with their congregations before they come back to the government. So that's very faulty, theologically, in many ways. And I don't want to push it, but COVID-19 is real. So it's not about Nigeria. It's a global phenomenon. Now, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I may say, do, do you find the statement I'm credited to the cleric man as pretty faulty in the light of, of scriptural references? Sorry, I, I, I missed that. What did you say? Ask? Would, would you say then that the submission of the reverend in the light of scriptural, refer, scriptural references are pretty wrong and off? Oh, yeah, because it's really, if you say, did these ministers go to seek the face of God in prayer? it will make much more sense to me. But to say they should go and seek, consult with their congregation and come back to the government, I, I don't understand that, sorry, I don't. Now, where, what, what's your thought uh, uh, between um, the spiritual and, and the secular when it comes to, to government authorities and rules, especially when it came to the issue of COVID-19 and the ban on public gatherings, which, indirect, which directly affected the gatherings of churches also? Yeah, I think the whole issue of COVID needs to be seen in context. This is a new global development. That's why the World Health Organization described it as pandemic. At the time they did, after they looked at the trend of how people were dying in Italy in particular and what happened in South Korea, I think that the World Health Organization said this, this is a pandemic. I'm sure a lot of people thought, no, what? They've gone too far in declaring this a pandemic. But over time now, between February, now we're in May, everybody knows we are dealing with a serious pandemic. So it's not about the separation between the secular and the sacred. No, it's that humanity is being threatened. Now, I believe that God is still in control regardless of the threat of COVID. So when you say to churches, do not congregate together, please think in this way. This is the way I will suggest that we think. Was government just speaking to churches or government was also speaking to churches and Muslims in the case of Nigeria that go to mosque? Is government also saying that only churches should not come together? Or even social gatherings, as in parties, as in weddings, as in funerals, people should not come together. If you look at it, what the government said, it's a general rule across the board without religious color, 
cultural color or whatever color you might choose to put it. So common sense suggests that if COVID spreads, spread widely and in a very devastating manner through human to human con contact, then something needs to be done to reduce the level of contact that human beings have with one another. Right, I guess man. that's where the idea of social distancing and physical distancing comes into play. So you are not saying don't go to the church, but it's the church has the propensity of bringing people, large numbers of people together. Can we find a way around it? Some churches have found a way around it. They meet in smaller numbers, and they allow for a two meters distance. All right, Reverend. Even that, we're, Reverend, we have to let you go now. We're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you.